at any given, for, for example, your phone. Our phone plan, yours probably too, has an option that allows you to track at any given moment the location of the other people in your network, which is the father of a 20-year-old daughter, sometimes seems like a pretty good idea, but it also means that the phone company and thus law enforcement has access to that information as well. Uh, but I'll tell you what, and I think Dwayne here will verify this, as we've talked about this on the telephone, uh, police officers love the iPhone uh, because the phone not only Store, you know, takes pictures for you. It stores geolocation information with each picture. It uh, records, of course, the location data of all the phone calls that you make. It also takes a little screen capture, a little picture, every time you switch from one app to another. So a good forensic uh, technician, what would be the official term, Dwayne? That would be it. A uh, for, a forensic tech can go into the iPhone and find out exactly what you've been doing, who you've been talking to, what emails you might have sent, where you sent them from, what pictures you took and where you were at exactly what time you took those pictures. They could basically take the phone apart, retrace your life for as long as you've had the phone. Now the government has been sued. AT&T particularly has been sued. The government has defended the telecommunications companies over giving up this kind of information. There was a lawsuit I mentioned earlier filed by the Electronic Frontier Foundation called Jewel versus NSA, J-E-W-E-L. Um, President Obama campaigned on a promise to repeal immunity for the telecoms. Okay, under President Bush, the Bush administration said the telecommunications companies should be granted immunity for these lawsuits filed for invasion of privacy because they were doing it in the interest of national security. Now, of course, now that he's president, well, the Obama Justice Department filed a brief asking for the suit to be dismissed on the grounds that the president has a, the privilege of state secrets, which, by the way, is something else he campaigned to repeal. Uh, the state secrets privilege says that the government cannot even disclose, can't disclose anything about this particular program in the interest of national security. And, uh, of course, the suit was duly dismissed in January of this year. Uh, the ruling was interesting. U.S. District Court Chief Judge Vaughn Walker ruled that uh, so many people were spied upon. You know, that little NSA splitter for AT&T that took all Internet traffic and phone traffic to the NSA? So many people were affected. No one person had standing to bring the lawsuit. In other words, as long as they spy on all of us, it's okay. Unbelievable. He called it a generalized grievance. So the FBI, by the way, and the reason we said hello to them this morning, they have an app that they can download through the telecommunications company to your cell phone that activates the microphone even when it's powered off. The only way the only way to deactivate that particular app, which works on most smartphones, is to take out the battery on your phone. So even when your phone is off, it's conceivable that they could be listening. But not just your phone is spying on you, your car might be spying on you. How many people drive a GM car with OnStar? Did you know that OnStar can activate the microphone in your car and listen in and record that conversation without your knowledge? Yep. Did you know that they can do that even if you let your OnStar subscription lapse? Did you know that they can tell you how many people are in your car at any given moment? Yep. Yeah, Sharon can attest to that. Had a creepy uh, incident with an OnStar operator when she was driving in her sister's Cadillac once. You see, while private companies like OnStar or Microsoft Sync or LoJack, uh, while they claim to protect your privacy, they, and they do to an extent, what they're really protecting is their customer base from their competitors. If the government comes to them and says, we need to know everything that you know about Sharon Gilbert and her vehicle, they can turn it over because they're acting in good faith to cooperate with an investigation into national security. And thus, according to the president, well, the administration is the last two presidents, they are immune from your lawsuit for violation of privacy. And Sharon points out this, by the way, on with that little star as a uh, 
symbolic representation of Osiris. But that's a whole other presentation. <clears throat> your computer is spying on you. Yes, uh, your hard drive uh, has been ruled in one recent court case to be considered um, plain sight. You, you see, when, when an officer comes to your home with a warrant specifying what they're looking for, if they should happen to see something else illegal or pertinent to perhaps another investigation, if it's out in plain sight, am I correct on this? I'm glad we've got a police officer here who can tell me if I'm getting off target here. Uh, they can then broaden the scope of their investigation to include this new information. However, a judge has ruled that the contents of your hard drive might as well be laying out on top of your desk because the contents of your hard drive are, for the purposes of the law, in plain sight. You have no expectation of privacy for what you do on your computer, apparently, especially if you do anything over a peer-to-peer -peer network. File sharing, online storage, it's all there, and according to the law, they have the right to look at it as long as you are a person of interest. Now, what do we do on the internet that might contribute to this total security apparatus, this virtual panopticon? Well, of course, Google. Most all of us more than likely use it to search for information on the internet, and uh, Google has a history of cooperating with the NSA. In 2008, Google sold servers to the NSA to help the NSA search through documents. Earlier this year, the NSA returned the favor by helping to harden Google's servers against cyber attack. You might remember earlier this year some news about a, a sophisticated hack attack on Google that came from China. Google called in the NSA. What price might the NSA, NSA have required in return? Don't know that, but one interesting detail that came out of this incident. The hack revealed that Google has built surveillance capabilities into its network. Everything it does, they have the ability to hook in very quickly and look at who is doing what and what's being shared. Now, why would they do that? Why would they build this automated surveillance apparatus into its network? There was a clue provided earlier this year by the head of legal compliance for Sprint at a conference, which he didn't know was being recorded, by a gentleman from IU in Indiana University. Uh, Sprint's automated request, automated system, re processed eight million requests for GPS data in a one-year span. Eight million requests from law enforcement for the location of Sprint's customers. And he added that there was no way that they could have humanly complied with that many requests for information from law enforcement. Sprint is not the largest of the wireless phone networks. If Sprint got eight million, you can bet that Verizon and AT&T received even more requests. And so it is in their best interest to automate the process in order to cut expenses and continue to turn a profit. Google has also invested in certain technologies with the Central Intelligence Agency. Now this is not the official logo of the CIA, but uh, a artist representation of, well, perhaps just a political comment on Google's cooperation with the CIA. Uh, they invested, you may not know this, but the CIA has its own venture capital firm. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a minute. It's called InQtel. Uh, they, were, they invested in a company called Recorded Future. The CIA and Google invested about $10 million each last year. Recorded Future trawls the internet and predicts future events, much like the Tom Cruise character from the Department of Pre-Crime in the movie Minority Report. It collects data from the internet and predicts future events. The data that we provide through our web browsing, emails, and telephone calls. They also mutually invested in a company called Keyhole, which is now the backbone of Google Earth. 